What we've come to realize is that water is as important and becoming as scarce a resource for increasing food production as land. Uh, now, this is not true everywhere, uh, but it does mean that uh, as we need to increase food production to meet uh, increased population and improving uh, diets, particularly in developing countries, uh, we need to do that while not really increasing our use of water. So we need to find ways of dramatically improving the, the productivity of water, of getting more per drop uh, in the years ahead. In trying to improve productivity of water use, uh, we should distinguish between rain-fed agriculture and irrigated agriculture. Uh, about 80% of the world's cultiv cultivated area is actually rain-fed. This means that uh, it's subject to erratic rainfall. Uh, sometimes uh, you can have uh, too much rain at the wrong time, sometimes you can have droughts. So the key issue in improving water productivity uh, in these uh, uh, soils is to try to find ways of conserving soil moisture, encouraging farmers through uh, management practices like uh, agroforestry, like conservation agriculture, uh, like agroecological approaches, uh, through water harvesting methods to store water when uh, uh, during the rainy season so it can be used in the dry season. Um, and of course also thinking of uh, ways of, of breeding more drought tolerant plants so that uh, yields don't collapse when you do have uh, a very dry season. Uh, so these are key issues for improving water productivity in, in rain fed areas. In irrigated areas uh, the problems are slightly different because here we, ho we often find uh, overuse of available water. It means that uh, through the use of tube wells and other um, uh, uh, instruments which are basically drawing the water uh, from the groundwater supply. So we're not replenishing uh, uh, that groundwater. So we're actually overusing uh, water. We need to, uh, again, to find ways of, uh, of uh, encouraging farmers to make better use of the water that they have. And uh, often this will mean uh, introducing, for example, water pricing, it may mean uh, encouraging farmers to change their management practices through more efficient uh, irrigation uh, systems uh, and of course uh, through uh, uh, simply uh, giving farmers a better understanding of the options that they have in terms of uh, uh, the crops that they grow. I think the first uh, step is to create a value around water. Uh, so long as water is perceived as uh, a costless commodity, people of course uh, will use it, will waste it. Um, uh, so we must give it a value. Uh, and politically this can be very difficult, uh, where uh, farmers are, are, are used in the past to, uh, uh, to getting a, a free supply or a subsidized supply of water and suddenly to be told that now we need to, uh, to actually start to charge you um, because uh, the water is getting scarce and there are other uh, competing uses. Uh, but water charging on its own is unlikely to solve the problem. Uh, in many cases, such as the management of uh, uh, river basins, the management of, uh, of water in lakes, we need to create new institutions where the various users uh, can come together and agree on what is the sustainable level of exploitation. Um, and that can be a, a very conflict-driven uh, situation and does require some collective uh, responsibilities and some, some collective uh, control, if you like, from the, from the government side.